Check, check, check. <clears throat> All right. I think we're going, but I have to uh, wait and see. I'm now live. It says so on on the Google machine. Oh, all my stupid links are on the wrong side of the screen. I was trying to be like really, really savvy today because a lot of times I, uh, I talk about stuff and I might get the link wrong or I lisp it. I'm like, oh, no way. I say it wrong. I'm, do I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sleep deprived right now, guys. Uh, there we go. Unbearablenewsnetwork.com. Unbearable. <laughs> oh, I got it right. Unbearablezap.com. Unbearablestore.com. Hugepianist.com. Sweet. All right. Hi. I wasn't going to do a stream today because I am in Omaha at the Unconvention with uh, Ron Paul and a bunch of other libertarian speakers. And I'm, I'm talking about uh, free speech and comedy. It's an honor to be here. But I was sick as a dog yesterday on my birthday. Just out like a light. I had burned a lot of yard waste. I don't want to call it waste. You know, sounds a little intense. But the night that I had beers and bears on my birthday, that night, I didn't realize how much smoke I think I inhaled while I was burning all the yard stuff. And um, I laid down. And I got all this liquid in my lungs. And, and the next day, I was just out cold. I was dead to the world. So I didn't get to see... A lot of your wonderful um, messages and stuff until the next day. And I really want to show you guys something that Coddington and DeLev and a lot of the Unbearables put together. And it was so sweet. I'm just going to start by playing that. And I, what, I was, what I was going to say is I wasn't going to do a stream today, but a lot of you guys wrote me really awesome uh, emails and notes and whatnot saying that uh, you really wished I did. And so I was on a plane and I was like, you know, I, I should. And then I saw this Tommy Robinson news and I felt like I had a, a duty to spread the word on a pretty unfair thing that's happening right now. It's pretty crazy because uh, when, when media doesn't report, I think that a lot of us have a uh, ethical obligation to share what's happening in the world. Um, all right. So let me play this first. How do I find it? Where are my downloads? Hmm. I'll find it pretty fast. Oh, here it is. Oh, I didn't add it yet. Let me add this. Happy. I'll just call it happy. Happy. That's how my son says happy. Happy. I'm happy. All right, check this out. This was made. This is just a surprise that I didn't even know was coming. Uh, you guys are seriously the best. Happy birthday, Big Bear. Roy Bear here. Look forward to the live streams every morning after work. Keep up that fight against the soy. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, Big Bear. Coda Bear here. Just wanted to say thank you for teaching me more than pretty much anybody else about comedy, relationships, encouraging me to have family and do well. And most of all, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Owen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Big Bear, from Miss Cunty and Edgar. Hey, Owen. Happy birthday. I just want to thank you for being an inspiration as to uh, those guys out there like me who are learning how to do it for ourselves. You brought great art to the world, and I'm uh, really glad. Really proud to have learned a lot from you. You're doing good work, and uh, all the best to you and your family. Hey, Owen, Inspector Bear here. Just wanted to say happy birthday. I appreciate everything you do. Love the streams, love the bears, love it all. Keep it up, man. What's up, Big Bear? This is Andy Beavis Hayes, otherwise known as Bearvis to the Unbearables. And you're currently playing behind me right now. I'm explaining Yoast SEO, crazy ass plugins. I just wanted to stop and wish you a happy birthday and that you inspired me to not give up on my passions, man. Much love. Peace. Oh, and I just want to say thank you for all the laughs, introducing me to a community of great people, and for encouraging me to be a better man. Happy birthday, Big Bear. Hey, Owen, it's Ken. Maybe I'm very wishing you happy birthday, man. Take a little time out of my day, because you take a little time out of yours to share your life and share everything you got going on with us. Man. 
it's greatly appreciated. And the impact that you've had on my life and my wife's life, my marriage, has been fucking amazing. Um, the community that we've built with the Unbearables has just been fucking awesome. And honestly, dude, I don't know where the hell I was without it. Uh, just just because this is the, the camaraderie and the friendships we've been able to build. Um, the things that we're able to do with the Unbearables is just amazing. Happy birthday, Big Bear. Happy birthday, Big Bear. Thanks for all the laughs. This is Biggles Bear saying, Happy birthday, Big Bear. You six foot seven giant. I really appreciate you offering to help with my knee surgery. I kind of cried a little bit. I'm not an emotional person. So cheers. Happy birthday. Here's actually rubbing you. Cheers, Big Bear. Happy birthday. Hey Owen, this is Tyler, also known as Bear Tanks. Just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I want to let you know that you helped me really learn to express myself better and more confidently and really helped me not feel so alone in this world. So thank you. Happy birthday, Owen. Keep it up. Happy birthday, Big Bear. Keep fighting the good fight. Thanks for fighting for free speech, Big Bear. It's ironic because in high school you never had two words to say, but we appreciate it. So thanks from the Bears. Happy birthday. And you don't pay for beers in Australia. He's from France. And happy birthday, Big Bear. Happy birthday, man. Like, you're, what, a hundred? No, I'm just kidding. But thank you, and happy birthday. Hey, Big Bear. Arrow Bear here from the Unbearables app here to wish you a happy birthday. If you have any love for historical aircraft, right across the airport, there's uh, Texas Raiders, P-17 in for a couple days. And in my hangar right over here, we've got the lead aircraft from D-Day. I can send you some pics if you'd be interested. Have a great day. What's up, Owen? Artling here. Just wanted to say happy birthday, and also thank you for being an inspiration to all of us creative types and supporting free speech. We love you, Big Bear. Happy birthday, Big Bear. Chicago Bear. Her pal Skulls. Happy birthday, Owen. It's time to wish Owen Benjamin <laughs> a happy birthday and to thank him for making us laugh when we didn't think we really could. It's time to wish you a very happy birthday. Happy birthday, Owen. This is from 1911 Bear. Yeah. Just enjoying my morning coffee. Oh, dear God, that's so black I had to call the cops on it. When Owen found me, I was in the PC corner. Now no one puts West Side in the corner. <laughs> Thanks for keeping comedy alive. Congrats on all that your penis has accomplished. And happy birthday. <laughs> hey, y'all. This is Carolina Bear. Here just to wish you a happy birthday. And also, thanks for the Bears time. So hope you have a good one. And don't forget, no matter what your critics say, keep up the funny business. Oh, hi, Owen. I didn't see you come in. Happy birthday, man. Much funnier than Anthony Jesselnick. <laughs> Base Tech's here, aka Base Bear. Thank you, Owen, for all that you've done for me and my family. Thank you for being an inspiration to myself and men and women all over the world. Thank you for being, for standing up for free speech. Thank you for standing up for the innocent. Thank you for inspiring each and every one of us to not give in, to stand our ground. Do what is right. Happy birthday, Big Bear. God bless you. Unbearables for life. To our most esteemed leader, happy birthday. It's not a call. <laughs> happy birthday, Owen. I love you, buddy. Happy birthday. <laughs> Owen, happy birthday. Be happy. Celebrate. <laughs> I can't have booze because I have work tonight, but have, have one, drink one for me. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Be happy. You already do amazing stuff. Just happy birthday, man. I'll shut up now, because since I'm extremely incoherent right now. 
I should probably go to sleep so I can get work tonight. See ya. Hey, Owen, you are 38 years young today. Um, here is to many, many more years of uh, good times and high fives. Um, I just wanted to say I'm sincerely grateful to be able to call you a friend. Uh, and I very much look forward to the next time we can have beers and talk about fractals. Happy birthday, Big Bear. <laughs> to my favorite huge pianist, have a fantastic birthday, Big Bear. Apart from making me laugh all the time and lifting my spirits when I'm at work and watching your streams, um, you've also made me feel like I've got a purpose and that what I'm doing actually matters. And for that, I will be forever grateful. Uh, so, happy birthday, Owen. I wish you and your beautiful family nothing but health, love, happiness, and success. I mean that was incredible. I I, I feel kind of like a like a dick for uh, playing the whole thing because it, it seems like I'm just playing a bunch of compliments. But uh, I, I I I felt a little uh, I blushed a little, but it was that was really cool. It was really cool putting some faces with some of the names too, and and I, it meant a lot to me that you guys did that. All right, let's talk about some stuff, and then I'm going to uh, jump some rope here in Omaha. I just bought a jump rope. And uh, let's keep going from there. This, all right. So this is how awesome the Unbearable News Network is. Check this out. We already have uh, an article up about, or no, where is it? I don't, I don't label these properly. Oh, here it is. Hang on. Hang on. Look at this news article we already have up. British alt-right agitator Tommy Robinson live streams seen as racist interference with peaceful Muslim gang rapes in UK. Yeah, because I, I was texting based uh based that today. Like I, I really wanted somebody to we have such a sick system with unbearable uh news network now that we can just come up with stuff like that on the fly. Like if something happens, we can just do it. What I wrote was um local resident Mohammed Smith has been inconvenienced for weeks by Tommy Robinson. Normal Englishmen like me just want to throw some acid in a woman's face and maybe stab a couple fellas, said Mohammed Smith. And this idiot has to live stream? Ha, huh. I'm just glad his live streaming is over so we can go back to normal. My family has been in this country for almost one full year. It's time for England to respect its real citizens. I mean, I haven't even participated in a gang rape today. But in all seriousness, um... That's kind of what really happened. So, where is the Tommy story? This is a, uh, just from the Sun. It's it's reported on a few news networks, but there's a, according to Lauren Southern, there's a, a media blackout, blackout, whatever, where they're not supposed to be reporting on this. Uh, mo um, I've not, nothing wrong. English Defense League founder. It's such bullshit when they write that. The, the, that's like the, he hasn't been in the English Defense League in a, in a while. For those of you that don't know, Tommy Robinson is a, is a British Patriot legend, huge balls, who uh, gets the word out about a lot of bad stuff that's happening in England. And uh, they've slammed him and smeared him any, every possible way they can. And, he just doesn't stop. And they finally arrested him today. They arrested him because he was uh, filming. He was reporting outside of a grooming trial. For those of you that don't know, grooming is um, is when pedophile gang, like gangs of pedophiles, uh, I'm not really sure exactly grooming, but something about pedophilia. It's like real twisted sick shit. And, uh, and so a lot of people that were writing to me were watching his entire live stream. And he was saying allegedly he wasn't showing people's faces. He was just streaming to the world what was really happening in England. Because I think one thing he was trying to set up was if they got off, if they didn't go to jail, Tommy wanted people to see what, what was really happening. Here's a, here's a current shot of England right now. Hang on. Did I not? There we go. This is, it's getting real bad over there, as you can see. Um, 
for those of you that are just listening to the audio, it's a it's a picture of Aziz Ansari groping the chick from the Hunger Games. It's pretty funny. Um, somebody made that Kiwi Bear sent me this. I don't know who made this, but this was just awesome. So anyway, the Tommy Robinson thing is very uh, disturbing. And this is one reason why socialists hate art and they want to censor art is because art is ahead of the curve. Our resident artist, Artling, painted this uh, a while ago. This is probably five months ago. As you can see, it's two British policemen manhandling a, uh, a jester. It's a, it's a powerful image, and they just did that again. It's just, it's just crazy. It, it, England's become a police state. And what, what were some of the... All right, so Warren Southern said... Um, where is it? We'll talk about Yakov Smirnov, too. I'm a little obsessed with the guy right now. Tommy Robinson has been sentenced to jail for 13 months. There is a UK reporting ban. No one there is allowed to talk about it. Fortunately, you know, Warren has a, a big following. She was just on Crowder recently, so that got like 5,000 retweets. So that's that's uh, that's good news. He was, uh, he was arrested and sentenced within like four hours. And for Tommy Robinson, jail is like a death sentence potentially because all the jihad guys uh, have, a, have a hit out on him. And he's a father and a family man. And he's married and the community is way behind him. And they call him a racist. It's so funny because his his crew is is actually racially diverse. They're just culturally very British and very proud and very male, which there's nothing wrong with any of those things. Like, I, I can't remember what I saw this on, and I, I don't even think I have the names right. But he's like, someone called me racist. He's like, me best mate is Bubbles. Ain't that right, Bubbles? And Bubbles is just this black dude. He's like, that's right, Tommy. <laughs> it's fucking, it's like right out of a uh, lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. There really isn't a racial element to it. It's just about England versus, uh, oh, is this Field of Bears? Grooming is a euphemism for coercively training children to submit to the will of a pedophile sexually. Jesus. Oh, God. Ugh. The pervert George Takai was saying something about that you can tell a child's gender with their brain scan or some shit. Man, these people are just fucking gross. Oh, shout out to Brandon who runs um, unbearablestore.com, which is one of the links I haphazardly put up in an attempt to be more professional. He made this little meme that made me laugh. This is on the night of my birthday live stream. It says, it's my birthday. Let's keep it light. And I'm smiling. Literally two minutes later, think about killing children. Really think about it. Like slitting their throat and watching them bleed out. So I was talking about how bad of a dude Lenin was. How uh, Lenin and Trotsky had the the Romanov children murdered. And and you, at, at that point, if you execute children, innocent children, as Anastasia screamed in vain. Remember that uh, Rolling Stone song? That's That's Anastasia... Was the was the princess? It's a young girl. The mother was uh, Alexandra, I believe. But uh, you, you're not. You're evil. You know. There's no. There's no justification for that. So Rachel Dolezal was in the news. She's uh, of course transracial. She was in the news because uh, she was hit with a felony theft charge in a welfare fraud case. So of course my joke that I posted was, uh, maybe she's black after all. And uh, it, it had an, an odd amount of laughs. Like 99% of the people that commented were just like, ha, 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 ha. Because I thought I was going to get hammered for it. A couple people did, but very little. Some people are like, oh, this is racist. I'm like, dude, you know it's not. It's racial, not racist. The, the butt of the joke is the idiots that believe she was black or just went with nonsense. It's all about going with nonsense. Because it's one thing if it's a positive stereotype, like Asians being smart or black dudes having huge dicks. But it's another thing when it's, um, or, or, or white guys staying with their wives when they have children. <laughs> but it's another thing entirely when it's a negative stereotype, like um, 
welfare fraud, which statistically is much more likely to be um, black. I texted that to, to Nimmer. And I was like, maybe she is black after all. And he, and he wrote back, no, nah, you guys got to have this one. She's white. Uh, Eric Nimmer, super funny dude. If you want to see his new special, it's at hugepianist.com slash specials. Oh, and, and a lot of you guys, if you could do me a, a favor and check out, for those of you that subscribe to my channel to help support it, which means the world to me and is necessary, it's a hugepianist.com slash subscribe. I'd say almost half, maybe 30%, 40% of my notifications said um, skipped payment because PayPal changed all their settings. So now a lot of the payments just uh, skip. I don't know why. So Amy was writing back to some of you guys saying like, um, you might want to look into this, but I'm not going to make the poor woman... Right back to everybody. It was actually her idea. She likes writing you guys. She's like on that shit. Like when people write about like venues and stuff. Because Bellevue sold out. Portland's about to be sold out. We already went a little over capacity. But um, when when you guys will write like where's the venue. It doesn't say in the, in the ticket. She's on that. She's such a sweetie. We don't put the venue name on the website. Because I don't want unnecessary protests. Although I will say this. I think it's dying down for me. Which is a... Uh, which is great. Pittsburgh was such a win. The fact that we could put Nimmer's special out and then I put my entire two hour set on Vimeo, I'll put it on YouTube too. And then to see the people that actually were angry about Pittsburgh, I think you have to at this point be absolutely psychotic to pro protest my live shows. Or a bot. But bots don't work in real life. I'm going to talk about bots in a second, too. I got some uh, joke ideas as well. I'm not going to do super long today because I have to jump rope. But I've been obsessed with Yakov, Yakov Smirnov today. Because I was working on what I was going to talk about tonight. Because I'm doing a libertarian conference here in Omaha, Nebraska. With uh, Ron Paul will be here. A bunch of really cool people. The unconvention. And... Um, I never really got into Yakov Smirnov growing up because I thought he was just like corny. Like, look at his face. He's just like, hello, hello. And, uh, oh, there's a cockroach right there. Holy shit. Ah, well, now you're dead. Ah, how's it feel to die? That's right. That's what happens. I wouldn't have killed you if you just knew the rules and just stayed quiet until dark. You had to be bold. You had to come out with the bear talking. So this quote by Yakov Smirnov is, uh, Many people are surprised to hear that we have comedians in Russia. But they are there. They are dead, but they are there. <laughs> I didn't realize how dark and hilarious this dude was. Like that whole, like, in Russia, that's all, that was all satire. And that's one of the reasons I think it's so important to not judge art. If you're an idiot or young, like I was too young to get the jokes because I hadn't seen the, the death grip of socialism yet up close. So I didn't really understand what he was doing. He's like, like, here's some more Yakov Smirnov jokes. I've been obsessed. So check this out. In America, you watch Big Brother. In Russia, Big Brother watch you. In America, we always find a party. In Soviet Russia, party can always find you. Like that, when I was growing up, I thought that was so hacky, but it's so profound. It's like the, so, the, the socialist world of doublespeak really is this. And now I think America is almost more socialist than Russia at this point. He says, every country has its own mafia. But in Russia, the mafia has its own country. I think that shit's great. Because it's, uh, especially the way he looks with that face of like, eh, yeah, eh, eh. it's, uh, it's so true. It's, uh, it's like upside down world. You know, it, it's, it's the world where the, the ministry of truth is the censorship board, you know, like that type of shit. That's socialism. They use language. Language is the ultimate way to manipulate people. Like, like psychopaths aren't really like the, um, like Leatherface and, and they're not really wearing the goalie mask. Like that's a, psychopaths are, are, are the, the biggest weapon to seduce and manipulate human beings is words. 
And I have a zero tolerance program for that. So when I see it, I call it out. When someone says tolerance, when they mean intolerance, it's like, in America, it's like, if I was doing it, I'd go, growing up, uh, we had tolerance. But now tolerance means intolerance. I don't know. I still have to work on it. My brother got me this for my birthday. I thought it was really, really nice. It was a, um, a welcome home mat with a bear on it because he knows that I'm not handling the move well. I mean, I'm very excited to move to the Pacific Northwest close to Amy's family, especially because I'm going to be doing a lot of touring in September and October. And uh, I, we have two generations of, of family to help with the kids there. We have her parents uh, her mother's, both her mother's parents live across the street and they're awesome. And then on the other side, her grandmother, which would be Walter's great grandmother's awesome. And aunts and uncles and her brother, who's an engineer major at Seattle University. And it's, um, it's definitely great for the family. But I'm just going to miss my brother so much. It's crazy. And I was like getting really jammed up about it. So he got me that, that mat. I mean, I, it's so powerful if you think about it. It's like wherever your home, wherever the mat is, your home. Because there's a bear and two trees. And I think the two trees kind of represent me and my brother. Ugh, I'm going to miss my brother. That's all right. It's life. All right, what is this? Oh, that's my one. Which one's this? I think I, I just went through all this stuff. Oh, so what else I want to talk about? Bots. I just heard of a pretty disturbing radio lab. And then I'll, I'll answer the, the super chats if there is any. I haven't even looked in yet. I haven't peeped my little bear head in yet. I've just been too busy lapping up the salmon and the honey. But uh, I was listening to this radio lab called More Human Than Human. And I, I haven't been listening to a lot of radio labs lately. It was one of my favorite podcasts. And then they started going too far left. I, I don't appreciate it when people always only use the example of of their ideology. Like um, every example is anti-Trump. Like like talking about like the eight, when people say like how do we live in the age of Trump? Like shit like that drives me crazy. I just can't deal with it. But it's a great show when when it when it handles a specific topic. But and it kind of gives you a a peek into this world of like these uber intellectual. Trust fund kids uh, that are trying to reinvent the world, like the TED Talk people, where it's like TED Talk, expanding the world and reinventing everything. It, and it's such horseshit. So th they were talking about AI and, and this one guy who had made a, uh, a toy called like Fergie or something where it was like, hi, I'm Fergie or I'm Pergie or whatever the toy was. And it's like, I love you. Do you love me? And they were interviewing the inventor of it and he was talking about how it, like it's no different than life. It's just complex human life is nothing more than more programming, which as a religious person, I find disturbing, not even like going to church all the time, religious, but just the belief in soul, a soul, uh, free will, stuff like that. I find this very jarring. And then it showed where it could go. And you'll see a lot of uh, bots on my posts. In Twitter, it was insane. But but Instagram, my Instagram's grown about 10,000 people since I got booted off Twitter because I just post there all the time now. That's me. I'm like I'm like uh, just that that house guest. It just wherever you give me a bed, I'll I'll do the same shit wherever you give me a bed. <laughs> I'll just put up my posters and and it'll just look like the last place I was. And uh, now you're starting to see bots and, and a lot of and bots are starting to um, mimic human nature so well that they pass the Turing test where they know what to say and they're always pushing an agenda. Like they're always trying to push things towards totalitarianism from what I've found. And the same guy who made that Fergie doll or whatever it's called, I think I'm getting the name wrong. It's not Fergie. But uh, he made a more lifelike dinosaur doll that when you like, because he wanted to teach children how to nurture, you know, like that it cries more if you don't like hold it properly or if you hold it upside down, it gets like bummed out. And uh, the whole time I'm just thinking, 
Yeah, you could also teach with human beings, like just family, you know, the way that it should be. And then someone made a, a video of like just bashing the dinosaur and torturing it until it died. And it had this creepy sociopathy about it. Like you, you didn't see the people's faces and it got like hundreds of thousands of hits. It was like a viral video and, and they were just beating the, the thing and torturing it. And the dinosaur thing was making like noises like Arr! until it just died. And it, it appeared like you were watching a torture. And that's, I think, something that this AI world is, is training is it's, um, it's almost encouraging psychopathy. It's encouraging this bizarre way of viewing life, the, 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 the narcissism that, that you can do whatever you want with anything because we're all just programs. And that isn't true. We're not. Because there's, there's, I was like, I, I, I didn't like listening to the sounds of it. I was just listening to the audio. I, couldn't, I wasn't even watching it. And I, I was like kind of horrified by it. It sounded like someone was being tortured. And it was just a child's toy. I don't think we're that capable of differentiating between simulations at this point. And um, I'm not on board. That's why I was coming up with, um, I was going to read you guys this. My idea for a new way to educate children. I've been thinking a lot about this obsessively. So I, I, I'm uh, re-listening to Gatto's book, Dumbing, Dumbing Us Down. And then I'm going to listen to Weapons of Mass. Did you just, what was the name of that one? He has another book that I'm about to start reading. And I, I watch a lot of his interviews and a lot of educators. And um, I've been obsessing about homeschooling and, and what the pitfalls are and the strengths and weaknesses and all that. And so I, I was coming up with this idea today. This is just totally rough. But after Unbearable's new, Unbearable News Network beats CNN in the ratings and Unbearable Comedy beats Comedy Central, like once we have taken over those two genres of life will be on to education. <laughs> but anyway, I was coming up with this idea. It's called skill swap where you set up a network where parents meet up and they, and they switch kids to teach their skills to another family's kid and then vice versa. Like if I was like, if I was meet, meeting up with a, like a welder and so I would, I would teach their, their kid or kids piano or public speech and they would teach uh, my kids welding. And, uh, and you just kind of, and you just keep swapping out and working with each other and seeing what your kids are really interested in and what they're drawn to. And then, uh, kids can appreciate what they're, uh, can, uh, figure out what they're interested in. And then they can offer, uh, labor in exchange for experience, you know, like a form of apprenticeship. And then I was trying to work on a code of ethics. I said, uh, learn how to make a gun before firing it. Know how a computer is built before turning one on. Read the classics before writing your own. Pursue what you're drawn to. Don't force it. But once you're inspired, commit. No awards, no grades. Accomplishment is determined by the student. Failure is not to failure is not being asked back to learn or apprentice. Success is having enough enthusiasm and or value to be asked back and back and back. Because life doesn't have grades, only relationships and skill sets. And this would help uh, give you those skills to thrive in the real world because that's what the real world is it's 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 um relationships and skills so like beekeeper bear like let's say i wanted walter to learn more about bees so i would be like hey he's gonna come hang out i'll teach piano to your kid or whatever and uh, and then if walter liked it i would say he'll he'll work he'll do bees he'll help you clean the bee things um, and then you could, he can learn more about bees. Like, like, so that way there's an, a value both directions, because I think what we're lo losing right now is community, but we're also gaining it in a different way. We just have to figure out how to take our unbelievable ability to network now and put it in the real world. And that's what I, I loved so much. I mean, there's a lot of things I love so much about that birthday video you guys made me, but that was a big one is that you made it real and you made it real for everyone to see, like, like, someone shooting a soy container and somebody, uh, you know, the beekeeper is in the bee outfit and the lab, you get to see her talk and you get to see Coddington's uh, beard, you know, like this is real. And so I think what we need to give our children is the experience of learning things from other people. And I 
do not fetishize intelligentsia, academia, Hollywood, Silicon Valley at all. Like, I don't think that those skills are any more valuable than welding or construction or um, computer programming or hang gliding. I think it's all the same. Not the same, but it's it, you don't know where your inspiration is going to come from. And I think the last way to think about the world is through uh, hourly wage, you know? Because Amy got into engineering because she's she's a logical person and very intelligent, but her whole thing was uh, she wa- and this is she's very intelligent because of this decision as well. And I highly recommend you guys listen to Stefan Molyneux's new uh, episode about student debt. It's called um, I can't remember debt. I don't know, but it's in the last two or three. It's uh it's crazy what what this debt this college debt is doing to kids. It's robbing them of their whole future pretty much. And so she wanted to go to college for something she knows she could get a high paying job for right out of college. And she was right because a lot of these suffocating uh, majors are like, like feminism or uh, psychology. It just isn't really going anywhere. She was structural engineering. Is this Field of Bears again? Debt slavery. You're right. Oh, this is uh, Kyneton. This is a minor issue, but YouTube is glitching the chats to look like everyone is a mod, but without the abilities. It's confusing some folks. My guess is some Google employees passive aggressively. One second, guys. Uh, my guess is some Google employees passive aggressively being soy. Just a heads up. Third stream so far with the chat glitch. Well, uh, you can always hit up. You can always either super chat for as low as you want because that doesn't get messed with anything for free is expensive it's just in a different way i'm starting to learn that twitter instagram facebook and anything that's like it's free the most expensive thing in the world's free like even if someone just throws in a buck it doesn't it, it just works better and when i do my stream monday at the normal time i've got a lot of great messages from paypal that uh, I'll read and respond to and stuff because those don't go anywhere. I'm, and I'm getting a whole system of, of making it so I don't I don't lose people like I, I have many times in the past. But um, and for those of you in the chat, yeah, it's glitchy. Google's probably fucking with the bear, or uh, just go to unbearablesapp.com and chat there. So what was I talking about? I, oh oh, skill sets for kids. Because I'm, I'm convinced public school is just a con, uh, condition. It's almost like grooming, except instead of pedophilia, it's, it's compliance. It's state compliance. And uh, I don't want my kids to be compliant to bullshit. I mean, it, I, just, I just don't. I think it's, uh, it's a rough life. It's a, it's a rough life either way. You know, I was taught by my mom to not comply to nonsense. And you guys have seen talks I have with my mom. My mom was very uh, instrumental. Oh, I forgot to finish the thing about Amy. So she's still in $60,000 of debt. And she could have gotten uh, a job because um, her Mexican, her biological dad abandoned, left when she was uh, very young and she got a good white one. We stick around, as we all know. And uh, so she was always like, she didn't want to have to rely on a man for money, but she met the bear and fell in love with the bear and now relies on me for money because uh, I'm stable and she knows I won't leave her. And uh, she is doing an even more important job. I'm not gonna say more or less, I'm not gonna be one of those guys. But being a mother to our children and being a wife and a homemaker and um, domestic engineer, I think is vastly more important than figuring out how to make uh, buildings survive another fucking religion of peace plane attack. I don't know. That's just me, though. So we'll be paying that off for 30 years. But I don't remember what I was talking about. I literally am. I'm just I'm, all right, I'm just going to bail on this idea. But just uh, just letting you guys know, if anybody wants to fill me in on any info they have about homeschooling, education, all this stuff, because I'm, I'm pretty done with public school. I think it's a uh, secular like set like it's it's one thing if it's separation of church and state. I'm not only fine with that. I think that's a 
a great American tradition, but it can't be secular God. It can't be like the state is God, which is what they're doing now. No. No, you can separate religion, spirituality, any of that stuff from school and government and all that. Great. I'm all about that. That's that's one of our standard moves. But you can't replace it with like, you know, global warming is the apocalypse and all that. Because global warming isn't happening. And that shocks people when you say that. When they're like, oh, what? No, you're a denier. You're a denier. I'm like, I'm, I, am I watching a, a Middle Ages peasant right now? Are you? Do you deny? It's like the models are wrong. The models are off. I'm going to do a live stream one day watching Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth. Like the whole thing through and just we're, we're just going to laugh. It's all wrong. And now... Even some of the lefty scientists are admitting that it was grossly exaggerated and the sea is not rising and climate always changes. That's why they had to go. It was, I wasn't born yet, but I had researched this a lot. In the seventies, they had a, a, a fear tactic called global cooling. And for those of you that don't do put the math together on that, that's, that's 130 years after the start of the industrial age with the burning of fossil fuels. 130 years. That's six generations. So after six generations, they're like, the world's cooling. And then they're like, no, it's warming. And then they're like, it's really not doing that much. And so then they're like, it's climate change. Climate change. Climate is change. That's what a climate is. It changes. It's what it is. So that's just saying change, change. And um, I'm not even going to say like, oh, yeah, I mean, of course, I know carbon emissions are affecting. Th- no, f- fuck it. I'm not I'm not going to do that compliance bullshit. Because theoretically, does that cause greenhouse effects? Yeah. But what, I know what else it does. It gives green plants way more food. You know that green plants take in CO2 and let out O2. So um, carbon emissions are actually making algae and uh, forests thrive. Did you know that there's more trees right now in America than when Columbus landed? Little known fact. Um, My parents learned from the mistake of putting, uh, this is Field of Bears. I gave him my normal number because he super chatted me so many times. And um, he said he was having work. I think he's out of work. And so I'm like, dude, just text me. You've you've earned it. (laughs) He's been super chatting me for months. So I'm like, dude, just you're, you're good. Um, my parents learned from the mistake of putting me through compulsory state obedience camp and homeschooled my youngest sister so I can hook you up with her for resources if you want. That'd be awesome. My brother was homeschooled and he's homeschooling his kids. He'll, uh, if his kids want to go to school, they can, but his daughter was so like, didn't like it to the point when, where, uh, they just, they just are homeschooling them. And, uh. I think there's going to be a revolution in education. It's it's unbelievable. It's it's as if our, our our military was still using muskets. It's like the fact we haven't updated it since the Prussian model that was adopted in America in the 1850s. It's it's insane. We have all the information in the world on the internet, and we can't just go back to. I mean, it, I think homeschool is better if you just have dusty books like no one loves your kids more than you do and then but it's all about you know I don't want them to just be around me and Amy all the time I want them to have uh, social life and uh, you know community life and all that stuff and that's why I'm trying to set up these, these concepts but I'm sure other people already have I'm just trying to set something up for my area all right oh I was, I was trying to work on a joke about it the remember extends There are these pills called Extends, and it was maybe 10 years ago, and they'd always be on late at night, and they were supposed to make your dick bigger, and it was on cable all the time. It'd be like, Extends, and there'd just be this uh, seductive woman going, you know, because it makes that area a little bit bigger, and they never would actually say what it did, but they just kept implying it. They're like, so what do you, and they were doing these fake man on the streets, and these and these women would go up to other women and be like, "What what do you what's your what do you need in a man?" And they're like, "Well, you know, I always need them to have their area a little bigger." 
And they're like, oh, right? It turns out it didn't make your dick bigger. It made your whole body bigger. And the fact that they didn't ever specify is how they got away with it. When they're like, you know, we just want it bigger. Legally, they could do that because it just made your whole body puffy. In fact, it actually took away some of your dick. Because when you get fatter, you lose inches of your dick. That's why language is so important. You got you to gotta be specific. Like if someone's like N-word, I'm like necrophiliac, neighbor, nanny, Norwegian. It's just like that with extents. They tricked everybody because they never said this will make your dick bigger. If they said that, it would have been a lie. So they're like, that area a little bigger. And after a while, there'd be these half hour infomercials. And I'm like, why aren't they saying dick? That's why. All right, what else do I have? Um, all right, I'm going to read the super chats and then I'm going to go jump rope and then do a, a talk. Uh, hey, everybody, I'm in the chat now. Are you guys good? Are you guys uh, laughing about? Uh, I see some LOLs. I hope that was about my fucking. Hilarious new joke concept. Oh, we have 700 people here with an unannounced stream. That's amazing. All right, let me read these. And, and thank you for everybody that super chats. It's a uh, big help. Hey, Big Bear, you missed a giant stream last, or a great stream last night. Well, I was, uh, I thought I was going to die. Like Amy was going to bring me to the hospital because I work like crazy hard. I'm an intense dude. And I thought my body was just shutting down because I was getting fluid in my lungs. But next time I will. Glenn. I didn't get the last couple live stream notifications. Happy belated birthday, bitch hips. I love it. Since I carry the same gene and haven't been officially verified, can I be bitch hips bear? Welcome, bitch hips bear. They're, bitch hips are pretty convenient when you're trying to carry around like um, like babies or soy. No, but seriously, it's uh, I have bitch hips. Leonardo DiCaprio has bitch hips. Tom Bearclaw, all news stories about Tommy Robinson arrest in the UK have been removed by court-ordered censorship. Yeah, why do you think I was so motivated to do a stream today? Like, it's it's now um, an obligation for independent uh, people that have a following like me to tell people what's going on. Uh, England is officially a police state. And I taped Feed the Bear in Manchester, England. Watch it. Hugepianist.com slash Specials. You can also get Eric Nimmers, uh, How Dare Me, and Feed the Bear. Screw those bloody waggers. Oh, I know. Uh, Liberty Snake Bear. Happy birthday. You're an amazing inspiration. I'm meeting up with Arizona tonight for my birthday for Beers with Bears. Can you play me America the Beautiful? I got no piano. I'm in a hotel. But, ha um, but have fun. I have an interview coming up, Freedom Tunes for UNN. Oh, sick. That's awesome. I'm doing a voice for Freedom Tunes soon. I, I, I got to... Uh, I gotta follow up on that. Yeah. Justin, wow, that was very, uh, very, very uh, generous, Justin. You're the man. Hey, Big Bear, just wanna wish you a happy belated birthday. Forgot to submit a video. I'll just donate here instead. I watch you more than I watch Crowder now. Keep up the good work, buddy. Here's to you. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, cool. Well, Crowder is also fucking great. Crowder has a, a more put together show than me. Like, I, I would probably watch Crowder more, to be honest, but. I think uh, mine's mine's a really good like background show because sometimes I'll ramble for three fucking hours. Crowder's is almost like a, comp a competitor to like a real show. It's like better than real shows. You know, the beauty of my show is it's real raw. I don't like that Dave Rubin kind of threw Maunu under the bus a little with uh, with Shapiro. And I love Rubin too. He's a great guy. But yeah, I don't know how you guys felt about that. But he was like, when he was talking to Shapiro about guests he's had that have been controversial, I was like, that's the thing that always pisses me off. It's like, what did they say that's so bad? When people say like, oh, I, I don't, because then, because then Shapiro was like, because they were talking about race and IQ and Shapiro was like, oh, kind of like Ezra Klein, was that his name? And, um. Uh, and fucking, who's the Ben Affleck looking fucker? I can't believe I'm blanking on this guy's name. I'm such a retard. Sam Harris. 
And uh, Shapiro was like, and, and Sam Harris was completely right, by the way, which he was. But so the fuck is Molyneux. What does Molyneux say that is any different? It's like Molyneux like two years ahead of schedule half the time. It's one thing if you disagree with them, but just talk about what point you disagree with. It's so I, I think it's so silly when people are like, oh, yeah, I mean, he is very controversial. It's like, what thing? Not beating your kids? Cryptocurrency? Uh, borders? Like, what exactly is the thing that's so bad? I, I just think that that's a weird kind of virtue signal that I, I just, it just kind of bummed me out. I just want to share that because I have no inner monologue at this point. Oh, just another Aaron Bearable who found the home den. If Bare Necessity is available, I'd like that. Thanks. Welcome, Bare Necessity. And uh, go to unbearablesapp.com, register your bear name. We're going to set up a hilarious bear list. Happy birthday, Big Bear. Uh, listen, but wanted to pop in and say you're awesome. Thank you, Coder Bear. And Coder Bear is the one who made the Unbearables app. Hi, Owen. I'm 15, and music from the 1940s is my favorite genre. Interesting. Do you have a favorite from that time period? If so, would you care to play some? Well, again, I don't have my my piano with me, but I don't even know what... I can't even name anything from the 40s. I mean, I'm sure I know something, but I just picture like, I've got a bucket with my name. Hello. Hello. I got a pair of pants and some oranges, and I'm walking home in the grass. Hey, Owen, I'd like to be verified as Carpenter Bear. Great streams and happy belated birthday. Welcome, Carpenter Bear. I think there isn't a Carpenter Bear, but I feel like there would be a Carpenter Bear by now. Uh, UnbearablesApp.com. Dom and some bears got me drunk last night, fuckers. That's hilarious. Pinder. 19-year-old, 140 IQ high school dropout. Got my GD after seven months, which would have been three years of school. Learn glass art is a trade, zero debt, and life skills years ahead of my peers. School is BS. You do you. I'll tell you two stories right now. My One of my best friends, Adam Avery, was Jehovah's Witness growing up. Dyslexic, never went to college. He's my richest friend by far, including movie stars. Because he the whole time, he, we used to call him Adam Slavery. Because he would just work after school. He could, he didn't play sports, didn't celebrate holidays. You know, Jehovah's are intense. And uh, he was just learning skills. And now he literally owns my whole town. It's hilarious. But we still make fun of him. Because <laughs> that's how dudes are. We, we don't give him the credit he deserves. And my other buddy was in a, a cult until he was 13. Never got any formal education. He now owns his own electric company. In Massachusetts and can build anything he wants. You know, he's not like this big money guy, but he's like the ultimate man. Like he's the guy you always want around who can just do anything. And I know so many people with like PhDs that are fucking idiots. Uh, Daniel, check your email. I got the answer to what you're trying to create. Please let me know what you think. Oh, dude, I read your email. I, I, uh, I was going to write back to you, but I was on a plane. Your story, I almost wanted to do a montage to it. You were up for seven days. Uh, like you sound, at first you sounded crazy, but so genuine and passionate. And I could tell you, you're intelligent. And I think that you're one of those dudes that's that's always uh, verging, like your chaos order guy. And uh, I really got a good vibe from your email, bro. I thought that was pretty sick. How you were, you were like obsessed with... Um, with archetypes and, and having like a, a kid build their own weapon that's their archetype. Like you gotta know what it's like from my point of view. I get, I get, I probably get to answer 1% of the emails I get. And some of them are fucking completely insane. Like beyond crazy. And I'm not real judgy. I'm talking legit insane and and threatening and uh, obsessive and, and stuff that I, it, if I was a more careful man, I'd probably send off to some authority figure. But yours had that twinkle of insanity, but was so good hearted and not threatening and, and brilliant. So I wish you luck, my man. I, I don't even know what, what you're talking about with some of the shit, but I just I thought it was pretty fucking cool. I read it a couple times. Because when someone just casually says I was up for seven days, I mean... 
you, you got to understand how that sounds to most people. But I get it. I've had those. I've had those too. Where like I was, um, never seven days though. I can't imagine that. That's almost like to the verge of a full blown breakdown. But sometimes when you're close to in, like full breakdown, uh, is when you really get a glimpse of of the infinite. Jennifer, I was homeschooled and I am homeschooling. I can talk to you sometime, kind of why I wanted bare phone access if you ever need anything. Yeah, and I, I haven't been on the bare phone today or yesterday, but um. Yeah, I'll give you bare phone access. I'm so tempted just to give people my normal number, but everyone tells me that's a fucking terrible idea. Because some of the bad bears had my number, and they just sent me such fucking horrifying shit. Uh, what do we got here? Audio pro video editor here. Need bear name. Lloyd suggested a sound bear, which has dual meanings. Audio video bear is less creative version. Thoughts? Just be audio video, video bear. It's so easy to remember. Oh, and if there's any audio video bears for... Uh, for uh, Bellevue and Portland, let us know. Uh, I know Artwing's doing a bunch for Portland, but the more the merrier. Always, because uh, those are sold out like legendary shows. Richland, we still have 100 tickets left. Because that's Eastern Washington, and it's just less populous. I'm just being, I'm very honest about this shit. I don't do that manipulative, fucking there's only three tickets left. I do that when there's really only three tickets left. We have still tickets for Richland. I just really wanted to see Eastern Washington because I've never seen it. But Bellevue sold out. Portland is basically sold out, but we can add seats. So we put up a few more tickets. But these are going to be legendary shows. Nimmer's opening. Amy's coming. It's fucking insane. So if you guys, anybody wants to help film, um, audio, lighting, chairs, <laughs> All right. I wanted to homeschool, um, do a homeschool coup with a group of parents in Washington. I live near Vancouver and my boy is one. So I'm looking where to move to. Oh, sick. I'm going to be in Washington State as well. Tangible goals is a great idea. UNN taking over Comedy Central and CNN, et cetera. Keep fighting. We're with you. Beekeeper. Oh, thanks, Beekeeper. Yeah. And, and uh, UNN gives a lot of people just a, a great vehicle and it gets eyeballs, man. People are like going to that website now because it's it's another type of onion. It's like the onion I always liked, but it's a slightly more right wing slant. I've always respected the onion, though. I think they're fair, even though they're blatantly wicked left wing. They've done satires that have made me like piss my pants. So satire is it crosses all boundaries, but that's one thing one of my goals for Unbearable News Network. Happy belated Big Bear. I recently got my girlfriend to watch your vids. She went from wanting maybe one kid to saying two or three. She understands we need to breed. We do need to breed. Breed. Beers in Omaha tonight. Potentially. I'm coming off a pretty rough um, sickness. And I've been traveling since 4.30 this morning. But I can, I can usually be persuaded. Joy. Happy birthday, Big Bear. Long time follower, first time super chat. Can I be officially verified as Joy Bear? Welcome, Joy Bear. Go to unbearablesapp.com. Why don't you get yourself registered? Last two super chats. I'm not officially verified until I hear Owen say welcome. Verify me as Woody Thunder Bear. That's a powerful name. Welcome, Woody Thunder Bear. See Jester Bear. Happy uh, B Day. It's not another year closer to death. It's another uh, year closer to seeing your sons grow up to be the men they'll be. I. That's a profoundly true statement. I no longer fear death. I fear death only because my children won't have a dad. But I don't fear death for me anymore. I uh, That's the perfect way to put it. I, I wish I had had kids younger. But then again, I wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been with Amy. So, you know, there's a plan for everything, I guess. Uh but yeah, it's it's an it's it's almost like when you when you uh, have children, there's a rebirth that happens where you uh, you get to relive life again. It's it's fascinating, and I, I had a great weekend with my parents. Things are great, man. Things are really great, and I'm glad I get to celebrate my. I didn't celebrate my birthday for ten years. My best friend Aaron Shoemaker in college died on my birthday the first year I moved to Los Angeles, and I always ignored it. That's one reason why this year I was like. It's my birthday because I'm trying to get way more into uh, into holidays. 
because I, I it was a traumatic event to hear the, that news because me and him were inseparable, you know, and he was a pro snowboarder and he died uh, snowboarding in Italy. And I just moved to L.A. Uh, to pursue comedy. And, and um, it was a crazy, crazy fucking experience. And and so I, I just always felt like my birthday was jinxed. But like even this year on my birthday, I was like, I didn't even want Amy and Walter to go to the store or anything. I'm like, everyone just stay home. Um, but I think we're past it. I think my birthday is a good day again. Oh, Amber, thank you. Happy bladed birthday. Have a beer on me when you feel better. Uh, and the last one, GM Droid. Happy birthday, Big Bear. I registered Iceback Bear on the app, but haven't been verified yet. Well, you are now, baby. Welcome, Iceback Bear. All right, I'm going to get out of here. I uh, I just want to pop in and make sure that, that, uh, that everyone's good. And, uh, yeah, much love to Tommy Robinson. Much, much love to Tommy Robinson. Uh, I can't imagine what he's going through, but I can because I, that's a major threat that I face as um, a public speaker and a provocateur and a speaker of things that at least appear to me to be true. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to say speaker of truth because all I can say is speaker of what I think it to be true. That's why I love I might be wrong, but I'm not lying, that motto, because and the Unbearable News Network is we might be lying, but we're not wrong. <laughs> That's like satire. Like satire is always right. It's in its twisted, lying way. But uh, I don't, I can't say what's true, but I, I, I can say what I think is true. And that's not postmodernism. Oh, real quick, just one other thing. Someone wrote a comment that I've been thinking about for like days. It was in one of the streams a couple days ago and someone wrote, uh, I was talking about children look at positions of power and they and they want to be that when they're a kid. And someone wrote, this is postmodernist bullshit. And they weren't trolls. They weren't heckling me. They were like adding to the conversation, which I appreciate. And I was thinking about it. It isn't. Post, it, it's it's postmodernist bullshit if it's like, if you make baking look cool, a, a boy will, will want to be a girl. Like that's bullshit. But the person with power, and not force, not like a jailer, but like, uh, but like when you look up to your dad or you look up to like whoever gets respect, that is what you want to be. Like my father was a public speech professor and that definitely made me want to do it. I, I watched my dad in front of all, all these people, all these students. And that's one thing I will say is my dad uh, taught a valuable lesson. Public speech is one of the most valuable things you can learn, whether it's sales, I mean, anything. It's one of the most valuable tools in the world. So as much as sometimes I feel um, uh, kind of weirded out that my parents are professors, because now that I see the socialist indoctrination camps, I realized that my parents were really good forces in the world of higher education. Because higher education isn't higher education. I, again, I highly recommend you watch Malinu's new video about that, the debt crisis. Um, but my mom was an amazing teacher. And she missed out, I think, on a lot of the lefty bullshit because she quit in 76 and didn't go back till 94 to raise her kids. And, uh, and she just is a great teacher. You guys have seen my mom. And my, but my dad taught a skill that, that is worth the money. Because if he was like a lesbian ballet woman dance English major teacher, I would, I would legitimately feel shame. But he wasn't. He taught people how to project. He taught rhetoric, persuasion, public speech. And those are really, really, really good skills. Except in a, a socialist society because then... It doesn't matter how good your argument is. It only matters uh, how close you are to whoever has control over all the weapons and uh, all the production. All right, much love. Hit that like button, share it, go to these uh, websites that I have over here. And uh, what else? Hugepianist.com for a few Portland tickets left and then Richland. And um, I have some some good news about touring coming up, but I, I was told I, I probably shouldn't share quite yet. I don't know. I, I'm always the dude who fucking likes to share stuff. But uh, yeah, much love and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the people that were part of that video and everybody that that 
uh, supports the show. And um, it's just awesome. Honey all around. Salmon for life. Joy, not soy. Mwah. Real quick, real quick, I just saw a, a pretty generous super chat, so I didn't want to ignore this one. Um, welcome, Analysis Bear. Welcome. I uh, Next time, though, don't super chat as I'm landing the plane. But, uh, because now I don't have a, a good send off like I just did. So, bye, I guess. But welcome, Analysis Bear. Welcome to the Unbearable.